I desire to come back and play again, maybe that's what I want to do. Maybe that's the challenge that I may need someday down the road. And that day has arrived. Michael Jordan warming up at Market Square Arena more than three hours before today's scheduled tip-off. 21 months have passed since Michael Jordan last played competitive basketball. For 21 months, the NBA was without its supreme artist. There may be many interesting peripheral aspects to both his departure and return, but at the heart of it is simply this. The best in the world is back. And in a sports world darkened by constant talk of money, strikes, and lockouts, here's a shining reminder of why we're drawn to sports in the first place. The drama, the anticipation, the sheer beauty of the moment. Today, an artist returns to his true canvas, the hardboard courts of the NBA. Michael Jordan is back. is the NBA on NBC. Today, it's the Chicago Bulls versus the Indiana Pacers. And listen to the roar at Market Square Arena. SRO crowd sitting in on history. Glad you folks could join us too. Hi everybody, I'm Bob Costas. What Michael Jordan does today and what he will attempt to do in the next several months and maybe years is truly unprecedented. It's never happened in team sports. Muhammad Ali, not in a team sport, left, regained the heavyweight championship when he came back. But in team sports, guys like Jim Brown, who left at the peak, or Sandy Koufax, whose arm wouldn't allow him to continue, they never came back. Today, Michael Jordan, at age 32, tries to accomplish what no one else truly has in team sports history. I'm seated alongside the voice of the NBA on NBC, Marv Albert. Marv, you've chronicled this league for more than a quarter of a century. You've been around for all the great events, but this is truly something special. Well, first of all, in most instances, is when an athlete attempts to make a comeback, usually they are past their prime. People like, as you mentioned, Muhammad Ali, who was able to come back, Sugar Ray Leonard, uh, Gordie Howe in the National Hockey League, and Bob Cousy, although Cousy was 41 years of age, so there's been no measuring stick. And when you consider the demands of a sport like NBA basketball, it is truly remarkable what Michael Jordan is attempting to do. Well, knowing Michael Jordan, he doesn't want to simply be effective or even be an all-star. He wants to be the best again. He wants to dominate. Can he? And if he can, are the Bulls a championship contender? Well, Phil Jackson has made it clear, as he likes to say, we still have problems retrieving the basketball. Uh, there is not a quality power forward on the team. And aside from that, should the Chicago Bulls go all the way to the finals, now, we're assuming that if things go well, they will pass by the Cleveland Cavaliers, but should they go all the way, they will not have the home court advantage in four straight series. Now, we know Michael is Superman, but it will be a very difficult test. Now, Michael, as ever, doing things on his own terms, so he has decided not to speak to the media at all, including us here at NBC, until after the game is over. But Ahmad Rashad spent the last 24 hours with Michael, both in Chicago and en route here to Indianapolis. Let's go courtside to get his perspective. Ahmad. All right, thanks, Bob. It was an interesting night last night while Michael and I sat around and watched all the erroneous reports of where he might be and what he was going to do. He said he was indeed nervous and excited about coming down to play here. We got here earlier this morning. He flew on his own plane in, got here about 8.30, and went out and uh, shot some baskets trying to burn up some of that nervous energy. He said he did have some concerns, mainly about his conditioning. He said he was in condition enough to practice, but he'd never know about what his condition would be to play in a game, and he will find out today. Today. He will indeed start. Here's one other tidbit. He will not wear number 23. He will wear a new number, number 45. Let's go down to Pete Bessie. That's the personal side of Michael Jordan. Now the business side. We know he's back for 17 games this year. How many is he going to play next season? I posed that question to Phil Jackson and Jerry Krause yesterday. You won in 25 games. All right. Would you be comfortable with that if it came down to it? Next year, 25 Next years? Next year, yeah. Sure. I mean, I, I don't think there's, uh, you know, I don't know if we could do that next year after he's been retired to retire him or to have 11-man roster or have him on the IR, which, of course, would be an impossibility. I mean, all those things snap up against the rules of the game and basically, you know, are different than if he's in retirement and comes out of retirement. So I wouldn't know. We would want Michael to make a commitment to play basketball and, and uh, 
you know, and, and you know, be a obviously a full time player. Yeah, that would would be something that certainly would have to be discussed and and talked about. And, and uh, uh, you know, it's very hard to form your team and to uh, to put a team together when you have a player on a, on a very limited time basis. I talked to Jerry Reinsdorf, the Bulls owner, yesterday, and he told me that they are totally that, that Jordan is totally committed to them for a full season next year, just as they're committed to re-signing him when he becomes an unrestricted free agent after last year. Reinsdorf wants to clear up a lot of issues here. Jordan did not come in and demand that Scottie Pippen or B.J. Armstrong or anybody else is on this team after this, and uh, he also wanted to clear up the fact about money. Jordan is not being paid until he was not being paid until he quit the White Sox. He will get his entire $4 million contract, Reinsdorf says, for playing 17 games and four playoff series. That's it from here, Bob. Right to you. Thank you, Pete. Boy, oh boy, listen to the reaction here at Market Square Arena as Michael took the court. And after Peter Bessie broke the story first on NBC yesterday of Michael's return, reaction around the NBA was swift. We canvassed many players and coaches for their thoughts. Here it is. I wish they'd hurt himself with a baseball strike, <laughs> but uh, it, you know it's going to make it a lot tougher for teams like us, uh, Indiana, Cleveland. You have to uh, put Chicago right back up there as a contender for the championship now. It's good for our league, you know, and I'm happy that he, he made the right decision. I think this is the right decision for him. Jordan is uh, <laughs> it's unbelievable, and uh, you know him being back on the floor is going to make that team pretty solid now. Chicago's a good team. I think obviously going to have to, it's going to be very difficult for them to win three series in a row. So uh, obviously he makes your team a, a lot better, but I think for them to get through three rounds in a row is going to be very difficult. Obviously they'll win the championship. <laughs> That's as simple as that. But uh, I'm thrilled he's coming back. Uh, He's the greatest player to play, as far as I'm concerned. Michael, 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 Michael. Michael. You mean the baseball player? Um, I think it, uh, you know, it's, it's good he's back. I think he's going to elevate them to, uh, uh, you know, another level of play. And uh, uh, it's going to make things very interesting. That's, there's not much more you can say about it. See what happens. I look at it if we if we play if I see him this year that means I'm in the finals. I like my I like my chances. You know, um, I think we all like to see him play against us this year. Every guy in this locker room is rooting for that, cheering for that. What he demands out of other players, I think everybody else will step up. So, uh, championship contender, I really don't know, but. Uh, a team that you definitely don't want to play in a playoff <laughs> right as of right now you know that they will be pat riley dealing an understatement he says it'll make things interesting the indiana pacers had just broken up their practice yesterday when they learned that they would be facing michael jordan today let's look at things from the pacers perspective as we go back courtside to marv albert who's joined now by matt gukas marvelous all right, Bob, it was at the Pacer practice session here yesterday at a uh, local high school in Indianapolis when Larry Brown received the news, actually uh, during the practice, Matt, that Michael Jordan will make his return today. So it was a last-second development for the Pacers. We asked Larry, how will that all affect his team for today's game? It'll make our guys a little nervous, but, uh, you know, every time I've ever coached against Michael, I found myself being a fan. Um, I, I think most coaches in the league would say the same thing. Uh, but Chicago doesn't do anything any differently, you know, with Michael in the game. Uh, they just do it better. <laughs> so um, we're going to have to play better than we know how. Well, Larry Brown has to be concerned how it will affect his team emotionally. A team that is finally healthy, playing well, and now at the top of the Central Division. And a team now that finds itself thoroughly distracted by the historic return of Michael Jordan. Mark, the Indiana Pacers are going to have to somehow find a way to treat this as just another game, however difficult that might be. And the Pacers have certainly made the point they do not see themselves in the role of uh, playing the foil so Michael Jordan can put on a show. Back with more on Michael's return in just a moment.
Chicago. A statue to Michael had been dedicated, and then the number 23 raised to the rafters. And that number 23 stays retired, at least for the time being, as you heard Ahmad say, that Michael will wear his number 45 today, his baseball uniform number for his return to the NBA. Will he start? Seems a foregone conclusion that he will, but that was the logical first question when Marv Albert sat down with Phil Jackson. Here it is. Yeah, I think we'll find some time for him. I hope we can play him 30 minutes, though, not get 40 minutes or something that's going to get wacky out there. With all that is swirling around, will the club be ready? I find it very difficult for these some of these players to be able to go out on the floor and play with him. I, I don't know. You know, he's been in practice three times, maybe he caught four, even though it was abbreviated practice. And at that level, some of them haven't even gotten an opportunity to be on the court or the same team with him. They've been on the court with him, against him, or whatever. So I, I'm going to find it difficult for everybody to play together. But I'll put him with, you know, Purdue, Pippen, uh, and Armstrong. So he has kind of a familiar group to play with. What is your, your plan for Michael today in terms of minutes? Uh, will you make the decision on lifting him? Will he tell you when he's tired? H how will that work? Well, his, his first run is going to be important. And I'll probably start him and see how he runs the first uh, you know, six minutes or so until the timeout. And, uh, you know, he'll let me know from then on. He'll signal me, signal me how he wants to come out. And, you know, to be honest with you, I probably want to play him in the front guard with the second unit or play their front guard, Fleming, because that's going to be a problem for us. And, you know, I see strategically there's certain matchups that are better in the game than having them chasing through picks and running around with shooters like Miller and Scott. I don't think any coach has gone through what you are going through this year. First, you're thinking about your limitations. Obviously, the Bulls have played well as of late. Now, people are saying, you can win the title. I mean, how, how do you react to that? You go from one extreme to yeah, the other. It, it is a vacillation between have-nots to have-lots. And, you know, the reality of it is, you know, we still don't have a power player that can throw his body around or rebound and get the ball back for us. We certainly have a lot of scores. In fact, probably too many with uh, Tony Kukoc and Pippen and Jordan and Armstrong. In the starting lineup, we may need a defender, rebounder, and a person that can set some picks. Can this club win the championship? You know, I'm not going to throw it out. I was a little bit skeptical about Phoenix's ability to play defense and rebound, although Charles Barkley is one great rebounder. With the type of team they've had this year, and they've really had a tremendous record uh, with just basically going with an offensive unit and playing wide open basketball. We may be able to do that. The East is a lot, probably more difficult to play that style of ball than the West. So, you know, we do have 20 games to, around 20 games to adjust and to slide with this and see how it goes. Phil, what are your emotions regarding what is taking place today? <clears throat> well, you know, I, I think that um, I won't know how my emotions are. I mean, they're pretty mass. I'm an anxious about his arrival. I don't want to see him get hurt. I, I'd like him to succeed. We all would. I'm worried that the team is going to overplay it. They might just drop the ball in his lap and say, hey, show us what you've got instead of keeping him in the, the flow of the game. All right, let's move down the hallway to the Pacer locker room, where I asked their star, Reggie Miller, if the excitement of all this has begun to kick in for him yet. Well, it was tough to sleep last night, to tell you the truth. Um, you know, you've been hearing about Michael coming back and the anticipation and some were saying he was coming back a week from this Friday against Orlando. Some said he might be back as early as against the Milwaukee Bucks. But to come back on national television against us, and they're playing well, we're playing well, and him taking a year and a half off, you know, it was tough to sleep, but I'm excited. What level of play do you expect from him today? I think a very high level. You know, he's still Michael Jordan, even though he's taking a year off. You know, he still has the physical capabilities of coming out and dominating the game. But I think we'll be ready for him. It was tough because I went home and tried to break out some old Chicago, Indiana, uh, highlight tapes to see how we played them, but I couldn't find any, so I had to go by memory. I heard somebody say that until Michael gets in basketball shape, it may not take long, but until he gets in basketball shape, a Reggie Miller is looking to run him off a few screens and have some fun today. Well, I'm not looking to have some fun. It's still going to be work for me, but I'm going to try to uh, use the court as much as possible because I think he's only had three or four practices, so uh, I, conditioning might be a problem for him, but I think if it comes down to the fourth quarter to the close game, I think conditioning kind of gets thrown out the window. Can he be the greatest player in the game again? Well, I think he still is the greatest player. You know, just because he retired and he's coming back, I don't think that has less in his value. He still is the greatest player, so we're going to have our hands full tonight. Well, you heard Reggie Miller say it. 
he thinks he will be the greatest player again. And to reiterate the point we made at the top of the broadcast, if he does it, he will do something that is truly unprecedented. Muhammad Ali not in team sports when he came back. Ted Williams in World War II and Korea returned from both conflicts to win batting championships, but many other players were in World War II and in Korea. When Jim Brown left as the all-time greatest rusher, he never came back. When Sandy Koufax left as perhaps the greatest pitcher of all time, certainly of his era, he was unable to come back. Michael Jordan today comes back, not just to play, but again, aiming to be the best. The introduction of the starting lineups and the opening tip-off in the next several minutes, but first we have an opportunity to go to our New York studios and check in with Hannah Storm. Hannah. Thanks, Bob. Let's quickly go through yesterday's action. Five games in the NBA. The Knicks came from six down in overtime to beat the Nets last night, 92 to 91. The Nuggets continue their impressive play under Bernie Bickerstaff. They are 10 and 4 since he took over as head coach. Denver now just a half a game behind Sacramento in the battle for the eighth and final playoff spot in the Western Conference. And we all know what Denver did out of the eighth slot last year when they upset Seattle. David Robinson had 36 points. Sean Elliott, 29, as the Spurs continue their excellent play. They have won 13 of their last 15. The Seattle Sonics are heating up down the stretch. They won five straight by an average margin of 24 points. Gary Payton and Detlef Schrempf each had 25 yesterday. And Phoenix lost in Atlanta. Steve Smith had a career night, scored 28 of his career high 37 in the second half. Charles Barkley ejected from that game after scoring 26. The loss drops Phoenix into a dead heat with Utah for the best record in the Western Conference. San Antonio and Seattle also playing very well. We have five weeks left in the regular season, and what a stretch drive this is shaping up to be. In the East, Orlando also at 48-17. They're tied with Utah and Phoenix for the best overall record in the league. The Bulls with Jordan have their sights set on Cleveland and the fifth seed. And Michael Jordan is re-entering a season that is one of the NBA's most competitive in years. A lot of teams entertaining title hopes right now. Two of them are playing at this moment in Charlotte. Utah, which could be the surprise team in the league this year, is visiting the Hornets. And with a report, let's go out to the Charlotte Coliseum and check in with Tom Hammond and Bill Walton. Gentlemen. All right, Hannah, thank you very much. First period, just over four minutes to play here. The Jazz leading the Hornets 17-15. And Bill Promise from Olivet Nazarene University. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming. Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the
The moment is nearly at hand. Michael Jordan's return to the NBA. From Indianapolis, he goes to Boston Garden. One last game at that venerable old building against the Celtics. And then imagine the scene this coming Friday against the Orlando Magic at the United Center when Ray Clay at the PA microphone brings Michael Jordan onto the floor as a home player. This won't have quite the impact, but it should be a terrific scene. And so we go to the Pacers PA announcer now, Reb Porter, for the introduction now, of the starting lineups. Here's the starting lineup for today's visitors, the Chicago Bulls. At one forward, 6'7 from Central Arkansas, number 33, Scotty Pippen. At the other forward, 6'11 from Croatia, number 7, Tony Kukoc. At center, seven feet from Vanderbilt, number 32, Will Perdue. At one guard, 6'2 from Iowa, number 10, B.J. Armstrong. At the other guard, 6'6 from North Carolina, number 45, Michael Jordan. The head coach, Phil Jackson, the Chicago Bulls. And now, Pacer people, let's get on your feet and make some noise! Everybody knows the loudest and proudest fans in the NBA are Indiana Pacer fans! Let's get ready! at the mic for the last game Michael Jordan played in the NBA prior to today game six of the finals against Phoenix in June of 1993 as they capped the run of three consecutive championships and Michael was named the finals MVP for the third consecutive year so it's fitting that Marv is set to call it now as Michael returns and the Bulls get set to tip off against the Pacers here at Market Square Arena Court side we go to Marv Albert and Matt Dukas Thank you, Bob. Yes, that was 636 days ago, so 21 months after his last appearance in an NBA game, 
only five months after his number 23 was raised to the rafters in Chicago. Michael Jordan has returned, and he's wearing number 45. And Matt, for you trivia buffs out there, the last member of the Chicago Bulls to wear number 45 back in the 92-93 season, a fellow by the name of Ed Neely, who was a very popular member of the Chicago Bulls. I remember Ed well, also with the Phoenix Suns. Marv, there's a, a lot of special moments in NBA basketball, usually the opening game of the season, the playoffs, seventh game of the series, the finals. I don't know about you, but I got the goosebumps for this one. This is very special. Interesting, and it is home team privilege how they did defuse the introduction of Michael Jordan, making sure that the Pacers got their due very quick in ending the announcement, letting the crowd respond as they did, and then getting right to the Indiana Pacers. And Derek McKee of the Pacers controlling the opening tip. The officials, Dick Pavetta, Ken Maurer, and N.F. Rush. Mark Jackson guarded by B.J. Armstrong. Michael Jordan on Reggie Miller here at the start, and Jordan comes up with the ball. Uh, Michael Eberlewer actually was knocked loose by Will Perdue, but Michael's so quick right now, he looks lightning quick. Well, he does have the fresh legs, not in outstanding basketball condition, but in very fine physical condition. Here is Tony Kuko dumping it off. Will Perdue pops it out. Michael Jordan looking for the shot. Not able to hit on his first attempt. Shot clock was down to four. That's when usually Scottie Pippen used to get the ball. And before that, that's when Jordan would get it under those kinds of conditions. By Jordan played by Jackson to the spin. Oh, oh. Rebounded by Rick Smith. Well, Phil Jackson told us earlier he was concerned that the Bulls will be looking too much for Jordan. Reggie Miller not able to hit from downtown. Pippen try to go back forward. And the ball goes back to Indiana. Well, on the post feed to Rick Smith, uh, Purdue actually giving him too much ground here, but then the quick hands of Michael J uh, Jordan to come up with the loose one. Both shots that Michael had taken have looked smooth and nice, just haven't dropped yet. Double team on Smith, got it out for Jackson. Rebounded by Dale Davis. And here is Smith. Well, the NBA player of the week this past week, Rick Smith who has been on a tear, gives Indiana a 2-0 lead. Who coach at the high post? Armstrong cutting to the corner. Led by Jackson and that double team. Here is Ku coach finding Pippen for three. Get the idea that the Bulls are a little rattled here at the start as Miller is able to go all the way. Well, there's no question the Bulls are tight right now despite the fact they're running the very familiar triangle offense. Michael has played with four of those players out on the floor, but nothing is very smooth like this second. Cool coach. Try to get the step. Rejected. Recovered by Kuko. And rebounded by Davis. 4-0 Pacers with two and a half gone by. Smiths could not handle the pass. And it will be Chicago ball. Well, Larry Brown wants his wing players, Derek McKee, and this man, Reggie Miller, to get out as quickly as possible to take some pressure off that half-court offense. The Pacers are a good rebounding team. They must take advantage of it by getting their fast breaks. Well, the Bulls hold for their first five. Reggie Miller guarding Michael Jordan. E.J. Armstrong. Shot clock at five. Draws for Purdue. Make it all for six here at the start for Chicago. The key saw the opening. Nice pass to Miller. And a foul is called. Reggie Miller will go to the line. Well, the compound the problem for the Bulls who are running their offense somewhat patiently. you got to give some credit, a lot of credit, to the Indiana defense by forcing a couple of tough shots and misses. But the Chicago Bulls transition defense, very sluggish right now, and the Pacers are taking advantage of it. Indiana Pacers Friday night here at Market Square. Beat Orlando 107 to 97. They have won two straight over Milwaukee. And Orlando, this following the successful West Coast swing, they won five of their last six overall. They've had big wins on, on that recent road trip at San Antonio and at Phoenix. 
while Chicago Friday night at home beat Milwaukee. Bulls coming back from a 15-point fourth quarter deficit for the Bulls. A rare fourth quarter comeback. That has been their problem, in particular in the third quarter. Here's Pippen. Got the step. Yeah. It will count and the foul. Interesting that time, Marv. The Bulls came down and spread their offense even further out to try to stretch that defense to get some driving scenes. Here are the quick give and go from Purdue to uh, Scottie Pippen. Got a favorable whistle there on the continuation as the Bulls have been dying to get on the board. Eric McKee was called on the foul, so Chicago with its first field goal. They missed their opening six shots. Six to two, Indiana. Third meeting of the season between these two clubs. They split the previous two. And that is career three-pointer number 999 for Reggie. Nine to two, Indiana. Kukos from deep. And back comes McKee. McKee delivers to Al Davis. Three seconds. And a three-second violation of all. Lane violation. Well, Reggie Miller open on this rotation because of the double team on Rick Smith's inside. Uh, the little man, B.J. Armstrong, went down the double team and left the opening as Reggie needing one more. Yes, looking for number 1,000. Chicago opening one for eight. Square Arena, Indianapolis. Capacity crowd, better than 16,000 on hand. A franchise record 17th sellout. And uh, the crowd receiving a bonus. This was a sellout over the last couple of weeks. But the bonus, the eagerly anticipated comeback of Michael Jordan, who has missed his first two shots. Four minutes have gone by, and the Pacers lead 9-2. to two. Jordan now posting up. Jordan with the turnaround. For three for Michael, getting good shots, but not able to hit. And the Bulls are one for their first nine. Mark Jackson setting it against B.J. Armstrong. Defensively, Jordan remaining on Miller. Purdue jumping out, but could not hold on. It will be Indiana ball with six on the shot clock. The Bulls coming out of the timeout and going to a post-up for Michael Jordan to see if they can't get him inside or get fouled. He's probably not going to get fouled on too many fadeaways. Michael, I have a feeling, is going to start taking the ball to the hoop. Beautiful setup from Jackson. Mark Jackson for Dale Davis and the Pacers lead 11-2. Here is Pippen. Well, Phil Jackson's biggest fear at the beginning of this ballgame is that everybody would just be out of sync. There's just no way to recreate what Michael was able to do in three and a half practices under game conditions. And Dick Pavetta with the indication that the Kukoc had touched it out of bounds. This, of course, the first time that Tony Kukoc has been on the same floor with Michael Jordan. In league competition. Scotty, Shot clock Scotty. at eight. Miller from way downtown. Davis gets inside. So Chicago continues to have difficulties off the board. Davis, five rebounds, two block shots, along with four points, and it's a 13-2 Indiana lead. 6.35 remaining in this opening quarter. Jordan fires. Rebound Smith. So Michael has missed his first four. And all of those shots are hitting the front rim, an indication that the legs are a little tired. Reggie Miller going around Michael Jordan, but coming up short on the reverse, and a foul is called on the Pacers. It's on Smith. That is his first. And this is always a concern of Larry Brown with Rick Smith. He'll usually pick up a couple of ticky-tack ones early, similar to that for the little block. But it's nice to have Antonio Davis back in healthy and making major contributions. Antonio Davis has had back problems, and he is about to uh, check in. Dale Davis has had problems with a separated shoulder on, on two occasions. Fouls on Mark Jackson. This is Antonio Davis. 
replacing Dale Davis. Antonio Davis's wife giving birth to boy and girl twins earlier this week. In fact, missed a game because of that. Here's Jordan, and he's rejected. Smiths and Purdue will jump it up. Well, you could see that coming side out of bounds. The first, this is the first time they've gone to a screen roll situation for Michael in the deep corner. Another opportunity for him to score, making a good hard move, but just, just out of sync and releasing the ball right now. And the other Bulls are not able to make up for it as they seem to be rooting and pulling for Michael rather than just playing their game. for his first five. Pippen off the hesitation dribble. Purdue. Kuko. Got clock at six. Armstrong for three. Yes. B.J. Armstrong knocks it down from downtown. Well, Michael was inside with Mark Jackson on him. Posting up, the Bulls were unable to get it in. Michael wheeled on him to try to get offensive rebounding position and took Jackson to the floor. And Jordan over looking for the steal on Spence. And knocked out of bounds by the Pacers. So the ball back to Chicago. Rick Smith's making a move there as Michael ever alert to what the other team is trying to do. Smith did a very good job, however, of keeping Michael from stripping that ball. Indiana with a 13-5 lead. Jordan posted this time against Jackson facing the double team a leg block called on Miller at a new 24 awarded Chicago here's Corey Blunt second year man out of University of Cincinnati first round draft pick last year replacing Tony Kukoc well, the Bulls starting to get hurt on the Pacers offensive boards needs a bigger player in that Corey Blunt hopefully to do a good job on the defensive boards for Chicago Jordan backing his way and then throws it out. Here is Pippen extending. Scotty Pippen with a strong move. Indiana with a 13 at 7 lead. It has been an incredible scene here in Indianapolis the last 24 hours. More than 200 additional media credentials were needed. As McKee is able to hit. Derek McKee with his first field goal. Scalper prices outside Market Square. Courtside tickets said to be going for better than $1,000 a pop. In the, uh, the nosebleed section, we're told in the area of $400 to $500 per ticket. Corey Blunt rebounded by Rick Smith. Jackson. McKee. Drive the reverse. Kept alive by Miller. Feeding Jackson. He changes his mind in a beautiful look for Derek McKee. Again, Mark Jackson wide open. He has been playing so much better since the Davises have come back and made a big difference in the Pacer ball club. His game has picked up as well, especially in the sister turnover area. Pippen. Oh. On the back tap taken by Purdue. Jordan gave up the shot to feet. Scotty Pippen. And Michael knows that he's about to come out. He sees Pete Myers waiting to check in as Phil Jackson gave Michael a good eight-minute run. I think he was a little upset at a defensive sequence between Michael and Pippen about a minute or so ago, but Michael was due to come out anyway. Mike Jackson has five assists in this opening quarter. Miller. The question is certainly stamina for Michael Jordan. Jordan for Purdue, who is fouled. Double teamed by Jackson and Smiths. Foul is called on Jackson. 2.59 remaining in this first quarter. We'll be right back. Exactly what Michael had in mind, but a long way to go. First nine minutes, 0 for 5, one steal and one assist, and he will now sit down to get a rest. Earlier, we talked with Reggie Miller of the Pacers about Michael's return. This is Reggie's reaction. Even though he's been playing professional baseball for the last year, and I think uh, mentally he's still focused in on basketball and has been watching it closely. And he's been practicing with them for the last week and a half or so. So I think conditioning-wise, he might be a little bit tired early in the excitement and the drama and all that. But, you know, come third or fourth quarter, he'll be the same old Michael. <laughs>
I think Larry Brown has to be very happy with the way that his team came out and started this game and withstood the emotions of the event and came out and played their game. They have eight assists out of, out of their uh, first uh, nine field goal. So a good sign that the Pacers are playing their game. And Chicago, four of 17 from the field. Save attempt. Indiana, 8 of 14, and the Pacers with a 10-point lead. Let's uh, check in with the Dean, Amon Rashad. All right, one of those comments that uh, Reggie Miller just made were right on. Michael had said before the game that he felt he was in shape, but the anxiety and the emotion of the game would probably pay a, play a toll on him. What he didn't want to do was to press his offense. He was hoping he could stay in the game, play defense very strong, and maybe pass the ball a little bit, and all the other things would come. He hoped to try to get it going as the game went on, not try to do it right off the bat. Mark? All right, Ahmad, substitutions for Indiana. Byron Scott has checked in, as has Byrne Fleming. Uh, pushing foul. Luke Longley is on the floor for the uh, first time for the Bulls. Byrne Long. Call for the foul. Reggie Miller sitting down. Strong first quarter for Reggie with 10 points, including his 1,000th career three-pointer. Hit two from downtown in this first quarter. Here is Scott, broken up by Longley. Pippen delivers to Myers. Pete Myers for B.J. Armstrong. Oh, rebounded by Blunt. That was intended for Longwood. Here comes Fleming. Burn Fleming. Let it be recorded that uh, Michael Jordan was replaced by Pete Myers, who was the man who ended up in the starting role when Jordan retired. So Pete Myers has uh, two minutes coming on for Michael. I talked to Pete before the game, asked him how he felt about it. He certainly understood, despite the fact that this team has played very well over the last 13 ball games, Nine and four, they won eight out of 10 and three in a row. And Pete Myers has been a big a part of it. Yes, I don't think he will understand the circumstances. That's an offensive foul. Luke Longley called on the foul. The ball goes back to the Indiana Pacers. Indiana Friday night, the win over Orlando, a very impressive victory. Pacers have now beaten the Magic six straight times here in Indianapolis. That goes back to the playoff clincher of a, a year ago in that first round series. Pippen with the save, but hands it back to Davis, who's hit by Longley. Scotty Pippen just cannot believe what he just did there in saving the ball at his own defensive end. Of course, you're told never to do that. If you are, to Luke throw it way out in midcourt. He threw it right first underneath the basket. A perfect feed, but to the wrong man, Dale Davis, who was playing with those very sore shoulders. One has been dislocated on two occasions, and one could pop out at any time, and that could be disaster for the Pacers the rest of the way. It's called a non-shooting foul. Byron Scott. And kept alive by Antonio Davis. We come up on one minute remaining in this first quarter. Dale Davis from the outside. Davis tried to sweep in for the rebound and a foul call. Foul on Longley. It puts the Bulls over the limit. And Dale Davis, only a 53% free throw shooter, will go to the line. And the look of concern on Phil Jackson's face right now. Not happy at all with what his team is doing at the offensive end and befuddled uh, even more at the defensive end. Dale Davis said not normally looking for his offense. He's tried a couple of post plays there. He took a very off-bound shot. But what he always seems to do is power his way to the offensive glass. Among active players. Well, he's unfortunately right there, a dubious distinction behind Chris Dudley and uh, Chris Weber in terms of having his difficulties up the line, but he does hit the second. Bill Jackson here on the first quarter is seeing his his greatest fears realized. The Bulls out of sync. Michael Jordan 0 for 5. And Chicago just having a very difficult time getting off. Making the adjustment with the return of Jordan. Armstrong hits the three. And the Pacers now lead 21 to 13. Interesting matchup now with B.J. Armstrong guarding the perimeter. Byron Scott and 
Pete Myers guarding the ball handler and post player, post point guard, in Brent Fleming. Armstrong on the move, and he's hit on a reach in. Another reason for the recent success of the Bulls, and really throughout the last couple of years, is B.J. Armstrong not getting off to good starts early in the ballgame, but as the game starts to wear on, he starts to look to penetrate more. He was not known for that when he first came in the lane. Of course, his job was to be the perimeter player and let Jordan and Pippen create plays for the spot-up shooters, he and John Paxson, but B.J. has improved in putting it on the floor. One of the better free throw shooters in the NBA, 87% at the line. Here's Reggie Miller back. And Dale Davis, who had an outstanding first quarter, sitting down five points, seven rebounds, two block shots. Ron Harper has come on for Chicago, replacing Corey Blunt. And Ron Harper has been making more of a contribution in a limited role. Hit three big three-pointers coming down the stretch in that win against Milwaukee on Friday night. Scotty Pippen had the big shot on Friday. A three-point playoff, a soaring jam with three seconds left. What a for Chicago. Pippen at 27 points, 11 rebounds, eight steals, and six assists. Final seconds of the first quarter. A pass intended for Carrillo just came on. And Scott checking the clock. Too late. The end of the first quarter. Michael Jordan makes his return. Goes nine minutes. Goes 0 for 5 from the field. Reggie Miller hits two from downtown. Three of six overall for 10 points. And the Pacers over the Bulls 21-15 here at Market Square. You are watching the NBA on NBC. In conference rundown, the Orlando Magic on top, although they have lost three in a row. Indiana leading in the Central Division. The Knicks are five behind Orlando in the Atlantic, and uh, Charlotte a half game behind Indiana. But that home schedule for Indiana, very promising. They began the season playing 21 of their first 33 on the road and did well, so they have a favorable remaining schedule. And favorable also because the Davises are back. Antonio Davis, who missed 38 games so far this year after the uh, operation to a, for a bulging disc, is back, and he is a key player. It's going to be key for any of the teams in both conferences to have that extra big man inside, and that's what Antonio Davis represents along with that man, Dale Davis. Indiana actually in the midst of a stretch with overall 15 of the last 21 here uh, at home. It's a 21-15 Pacer lead. Chicago only 5 of 19 from the field in the first quarter. Indiana 8 for 20 and off the boards the Pacers rocking the Bulls to the tune of a 16-6 advantage. And 7 points off those 16 rebounds. And I think Phil Jackson's going to start to think about it, and it might not be in a game or two, but changing the starting lineup, going back to maybe bringing two coach off the bench and get maybe a Corey Blunt, a bigger body in there to do some of the dirty work inside. Off the steal, Murray Fleming for Byron Scott, Antonio Davis, Wayne Farrell, and Rick Smith are up front. Indiana, a very deep ball club. They go basically with a 10-man rotation. Here's Fleming with a shot clock running down. We back Smith. The Pacers lead by eight. Pete Myers trying to break, but Byron Scott able to get back. With this particular lineup on the floor for Chicago, I got not a lot of firepower, just B.J. and Scotty Pippen. And Pippen drills it home. 23-17, Indiana. After the slow start by Chicago, they did finish with a 6-1 run at the end of the first quarter. And have to be excited and thrilled with only being six points down for as poorly as they played in that first quarter. Well, they started about one for 12 from the field. Scott, that's a three-pointer. who has been playing extremely well. Outside official. Ken Bauer with the call. It's on the Pacers. It's on Farrell. And here's Steve Kerr checking in as uh, both clubs have done quite a bit of shuffling here 
in the first half. On the subject of Byron Scott, Larry Brown says he is the Pacers' best athlete. He's played so well both this season and last season. Uh, last year, the Pacers gave him a new two-year contract. Long lead, wild shot, rebounded by a block, and a loose ball foul. Well, in that triangle offense, there are just so many jump shots that are taken, which affords a lot of offensive rebounding opportunities. And if you're alert, as Horace Grant was for so many years, you can pick off a lot. Corey Blunt is starting to get a better feel for this offense. Call for the foul again. Pippen will go to the line. Scotty Pippen actually had the ball knocked away when he was trying to tap it uh, to the hoop as he was hit by Antonio Davis. And now Scotty Pippen will shoot two. Minute 45 gone by in the second quarter. Pacers with the 26-17 lead. Marv Albert with Matt Gugas on the shot. Costas is with us. Michael Jordan is with us. Play the first nine minutes, 8.59 of the first quarter to be precise, but missed his first five shot attempts. Sam Mitchell comes up for the first time. Sam Mitchell has been in and out of the starting lineup. What were the injuries suffered earlier by uh, both Nail Davis and Antonio Davis? And now we see the Bulls extending their defense after the free throw situation. And I'm sure this is something they're going to go to more and more now that Michael Jordan is back. They'll be able to use Coop Coach and Blunt, big people up on the ball, much as Horace Grant used to. And that used to create a lot of turnovers and easy hoops for the Bulls. Yes, that's a subject that we have touched on on a number of occasions when we've seen the Chicago players. He fires is able to hit the jump shot by the fact that the Bulls trap so successful in, in recent years has uh, not been an operation, but with Michael Jordan back, it, uh, it's certainly a different picture when it comes to the defensive end for Chicago. Oh, and the foul is called on Myers. 9.47 remaining. Second quarter. Timeout taken. Indiana now leads by five. Golden State battles Shaq and the top team in the East. The Magic next Sunday on NBC. Today's the day. Toyota dealers everywhere are celebrating the beginning of spring. The right time to get financing as low as 2.9% on the right car. The all-new Tercel with a low starting price of $99.98. Beautifully designed inside and out and beautifully equipped for around 13. It's Toyota's Today's the Day sales event. And with 2.9% financing, your Toyota dealer wants to get your spring off to a great start. In the middle of my work day, I don't do power lunches. I do power lifts. And when you work out this hard, you better use a deodorant that works hard too, and never quits. That's why I use Speed Stick. It gives me 110% protection that lasts all day. And fortunately, all night. Because while I may not have time for lunches, I always manage to find some time for dinner. Speed Stick, like you, it never quits. Five minutes. Taste that goes all out when you're out. Hey! Never made it to the bar! No! No, I found a waitress! Miller Light Ice. The night is young. The NBA on NBC is brought to you by Toyota and their full line of quality cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. By Taco Bell. Try new Border Light Tacos with all the taste, but just half the fat. New Border Light Tacos from Taco Bell. And by the Gatorade Company. If you're not standing on the sidelines, you're going to get thirsty. Life is a sport. Drink it up. Yes, this is Reggie country here in Indianapolis, uh, Indiana. Reggie, and this is normal procedure. Time to time during the course of the game. He will be stretched out, although... He does come into today with a strained left shoulder. Did not seem to have any problems at all on the first quarter when he was able to hit for 10 points. And the reason that that shoulder is so sore, it got tangled up with Shaquille O'Neal under the basket on Friday night. I talked to Reggie yesterday in practice. He said he felt like it was almost going to be pulled off. The Pacers were a very loose basketball team at their shoot-around yesterday. And then when they found out about the Michael Jordan situation, their whole demeanor seemed to change. 
would like to uh, welcome those of you who have been watching the Utah Jazz and the Charlotte Hornets. We welcome you to Market Square Arena with 947 remaining in the first half. And the pace is leading the ball 26 to 21. Michael Jordan is back on the floor. Played the first nine minutes in the first quarter. Attempted five shots, did not hit. And when Michael sat down, Chicago outscored Indiana 12 to 6. Scotty Pippen and B.J. Armstrong have accounted for 18 of the Bulls' 21 points. Will Purdue with one point, so three former teammates of uh, Michael prior to the return, scoring 19 of the of the 21. But Chicago, after a slow start, has been able to turn it around. It's now a six-point Indiana lead. Jordan handling against Scott. So it is Jordan and Kerr in the backcourt with Longley, Blunt, and Kukoc on the front line. Will Jackson trying a different combination. Shot clock at six. Kukoc hesitated and rebounded by McKee. Sam Mitchell. He was looking down low for Rick Smith, who was well covered. Now McKee went to the turnaround. Would love to see Derek more aggressive offensively. Very solid ball player, does a lot of the little stuff. Timeout is taken by Kerr, who was in trouble time with uh, Vern Fleming all over him. It's a 20-second timeout. Uh, Phil Jackson is very upset right now with the way that this team is executing. But keep in mind, right now, Michael Jordan is out on the floor with four players that he has never played with before, other than a number of minutes at practice. And Phil Jackson also told us before the game that some of the fellows never even got a chance to play with Michael. So there's going to be timing problems. Right now, in effect, Michael is the point guard. He's going to handle the ball the most. Tony Kukoc will get to handle it. Steve Kerr will fade to the corner, fade to open spots for jump shots. But that was just a simple little entry play to get into their triangle offense and handled very poorly by Blunt and Phil Jackson wants to get things straightened out. Wait a second. Is it possible? Does Michael have the, uh, the pants on backwards? The logo in the back? Let's see. Normally it's in the front. Here is Jordan getting the step. Oh! And Smith with the rebound. Jordan breaks off the outlet. And that's the old Michael Jordan there coming out of the backboard after the other team gets a defensive rebound. That's when Michael becomes extremely dangerous. He has a feel for where that next pass is going, and he'll pick plenty of those off the rest of the way. Outside of Pippen and Armstrong, the rest of the bowl shooting a combined one for 14. Shot clock at five. Good fake by Spence. And he's fouled. Rick Smith throwing the fake at Luke Walker. And then Jordan came over to help out. And he picks up his first foul. Well, Rick Smith is just such a confident offensive player this year as it's been de developing over the last couple of years. Just a little pump fake to get Luke Longley on a very poor defensive play. But then Smith's doing the wise thing, taking it hard to the hole, knowing that somebody was going to bop him. It was Jordan coming down to help out and force Smith to the line. Averaging 17 and a half per game. He's a 74% free throw shooter. Comes off a good one, eight for 16, 21 points against Orlando on, on Friday night. 10 point lead for the Pacers. One of the high post for Kukoc. Tony Kukoc has had two outstanding games against Indiana. Here's Longley. A wild shot by Longley. Fleming for Mitchell. Smiths. Yes. Pacers with their biggest lead of the game. Amazing touch for Rick Smith. Not only can he do it inside with little hook and little jumpers in the lane, he can step out to 17 feet very nicely. Jordan. Try to give it up. Although that might have been called in the act. Well, Rick Smith's very comfortable when he steps out to the perimeter. And it's very difficult for centers to get the feeling and realize that he's going to be able to spot up from 17 feet as Michael finds a seam and desperately trying to get on the scoreboard here to just to get that out of the way. Smith's out of the foul. His second here is Jordan. And still.
looking for his first point. 0 for 6 from the field. 0 for 1 from the line. And now hearing it from the crowd. Well, this might not be the way Michael Jordan envisioned putting up his first point, but he will take it. And the Pacers now lead 33 to 22. Miller coming off the screen, played by Jordan. Mark Jackson back on the floor, and this call away from the ball. And the foul against the ball. It's on Kukos, his second. Three team fouls on the Bulls. Tony Kukoc inside here getting all tangled up, trying to get through a screen there. And that's not the way to do it, trying to go right through the chest of Reggie Miller. Today's the day to see your Toyota dealer and experience the luxury of Avalon. And right now, there's a wide selection starting at only $22,758. Experience the all-new Avalon. Hey, Chi-Chi, got room for a Forza? Sure, and then some. Take advantage of Toyota Previa's special lease program. Imagine a Previa with lots of options for only $2.99 a month. It's Toyota's Today's the Day spring sales event, so hurry. Hey, there's Chi-Chi. some good things happen, not just for myself, but for my teammates. I just love to be out there, to perform for people. It's just showing people something something special. But the, the only thing that really matters is the love of the game, because the game is sacred. Defending champion Lauren Roberts tries to win it again, but the strongest field of the year is on his heels. Final round coverage of the Nestle Invitational, next on NBC. Great moments in the career of Michael Jordan back to game two in 91, the final series between the Los Angeles Lakers and the Chicago Bulls. Michael Jordan going on to win his first of three championships, doing it against Magic Johnson and the Lakers. And that man, Byron Scott, remembered that move very well, a member of that Laker ball club. Indiana by 11, seven and a half remaining in this first half. Rick Smiths. Now he put the move on Will Perdue, who was checked in for Luke Longley. Michael Jordan using the screen met by Smiths. Getting it to Perdue. And Perdue's pass broken up by Mitchell with eight on the shot clock. Michael realizing himself that he's pounding the ball a little bit too much right now, looking very hard to create some things and probably thinking too much out there right now. He's going to have to have a couple of things happen where he can just relax and play. And Pippen has it knocked away. Good hands by McKee. Six remaining on the 24th. Crowd one of the call against Chicago. Pippen coming up short for the new 24 for the Bulls. Kerr and 
Jordan now in the backcourt with Purdue, Pippen, and Kuko. The backcourt flip for Pippen. Rejected, but Dick Pippen with the call against the Pacers. Right. Nice job, excuse me, Mark. Nice job of Steve Kerr patiently waiting for the offense to develop with a little flash up by Will Purdue and a nice cut by Scottie Pippen. Here Pippen coming off who has been aggressive taking the ball to the basket. And this is how the Bulls will start to get more free throws. They are one of the teams in the league shoots very few threes. Free throws only 25 a game making 18 which is really hard for their team right now to score because that's that hidden way to score points and another way to enable them to get up and pressure defensively. The foul on Smith's his second and the Pacers now lead 33-24. Jackson calling out the play. Miller off the screen, met by Jordan. Michael getting more aggressive defensively. Open shot for Mitchell. Indiana leads by 11. Jordan using the pick. An offensive foul is called as Will Purdue was on the ball and setting that pick. Well, Scotty Pippen put that ball hard to the basket. Got banged by a couple of Pacers and hurt his wrist on the play. Was shaking it for a while there as he's communicating with Tony Ku coach as Scotty holding on to that wrist as he banged it hard on that left-hand layup attempt. Here's Mark Jackson. Mark Jackson with his first five assists. Indiana 37, Chicago 24. First stop by Jackson. And Jordan resets. Now picked up on a switch by McKee. Kerr for three. And a loose ball foul. It's on the Pacers. It's on Mitchell. Indiana is over. The limit. Now Bill Weddington and B.J. Armstrong checking in for Chicago. Steve Kerr sitting down. That was not the kind of shot that the Bulls wanted there. However, Steve felt the shot clock was winding down, launched the quick three with a hand in his face. But this man will Purdue, one of the best rebounders in the league per minute play. You see there, seven rebounds in 21 minutes. One in three is outstanding. There you see those numbers. Last year, Will, a forgotten man, not even on the playoff roster, took that very hard, but to his credit, battled back hard in the summer to work his way and took advantage of the departure of Bill Cartwright to become the starter here in Chicago. Indiana by 13. And once again, with Michael Jordan on the floor, the, the Bulls have fallen back a 10-3 run by the Pacers since Michael made his return. Here's Miller. Miller again. Rebounded by Dale Davis. Jackson passing on the three. Dale Davis has ten rebounds. Just under five minutes. Remaining first half. Antonio Davis rejected by Will Purdue. Kept alive. The key. The key off the boards. Oh, you know that's Bobby. Chicago coaching staff crazy. You cannot get that many opportunities. The Bulls rebounding problems continue. Purdue and rebounded by, yes, Dale Davis. And they are absolutely and thoroughly dominating both backboards. Jordan got picked off. Miller fires. Yes! Well, long jump shots mean long rebounds, and both Michael Jordan and Scotty Pippen have been flying at people, but that leaves openings in the seams to pick off those long rebounds. And the ones in tight, the Indiana Pacers are just out hustling and overpowering the Chicago Bulls inside right now. As Reggie Miller now coming off that screen, clearing himself from the pick, 
squaring up, eyeing the hoop, and training one more three-point shot. You're watching the NBA on NBC. Some 34 seconds since Michael Jordan made his return after that nine-minute stint in the first quarter with Michael back on the floor. Pacers with a 15-3 advantage. Jordan still looking for his first field goal. And there it is. Michael Jordan, after missing his first six shots, able to connect. He has only three points. Well, here it is. The first time the Chicago Bulls just went flat-out isolation for Michael. Reggie Miller, knowing that Jordan has been struggling from the field, did the wise thing and got off him because he knew Michael was thinking possible drive here, gave him the jumper, and Michael finally nails one. At the other end, it's Jordan called for the foul. Just under four minutes remaining in this first half. McKee, feeling the contact, went to the hook. Pippen lost it. Slipped out of his hands. Pacers 42. The Bulls 26. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> nice idea. Antonio Davis cutting lost his man with the pass off the mark. Here is Armstrong for three. E.J. Armstrong with his third from downtown. It's a 13 point Indiana lead. Well, Larry Brown has been happy with the play of Mark Jackson of late. Not happy with that particular pass, however. Antonio Davis had it knocked away, but recovered. Shot clock at four. Jackson for Davis. It's a 24-second violation or a foul call. Let's see. Dick Pavetta says foul on the play against Chicago. It's on Weddington. Well, on that cut by Antonio Davis, it was supposed to be set up as a screen roll situation. Jackson with the wild behind the back pass, and B.J. Armstrong makes them pay for it at the other end as he seems Antonio to be Davis feeling very with comfortable with his offense. And in, in the long run, once Michael Jordan gets accustomed to being back on the basketball floor, what do you see as the effect of the new uh, hand-checking rules? Larry Brown... I know made the point that if Michael had started his career with the rules, he would have averaged 50 points per game. Even before they changed that, Rob, any time Michael wanted to drive to the basket, he has the ability, and of course the respect of the officials, if he creates that contact, he's going to go to the free throw line. He should benefit a great deal from it. Yes, think of all the additional free throws, but that's down the line. Pippen hit on a reach in. 2.35 left in this first half, but he on the uh, foul of second. Let's check in with Ahmad Rashad. Mark? All right, Mark, I was talking to Michael about that hand-checking rule, and he was more concerned about his defense, if he would be, you know, aware of, of not getting that hand out there and maybe having enough practice to maybe use the form as opposed to uh, using his hand. So that was something he felt like he'd only get better if he got a chance to play and work it out in a game-type situation. Mark? Yeah, I could see that because most teams went through the entire preseason to recall all the problems the teams had making the adjustment. And here is Michael returning without any uh, preseason at all, and he will have to make the adjustment quickly. Antonio Davis. Again, Dale Davis with that active body, keeping it alive, but Michael Jordan able to get to it. Jordan off the dribble for the pull-up, and he draws the foul. A hack on Miller. And Jordan goes to the line. Well, this has been the weakness of the Bulls, the interior defensive rebound. This time, Michael with inside position, able to out-quick and out-hustle Dale Davis to chase it down, and then going the other way, a little shake move on Reggie Miller. He had him beat, but decides to pull up for the jumper. Reggie knew he was beat, but would like to pull that hand back, not wanting to foul the jump shooter. Haywood Workman checking in for the first time this afternoon. Haywood Workman at one point beat out Mark Jackson after Jackson was on the disappointing side earlier in the season. Haywood did a nice job as the starting point guard last year. 
and uh, has been out of the rotation as of late and not played the last three games. Larry was saying yesterday he was not disappointed at all with the way that Hayward Workman and Vern Fleming played the point guard position last year, but the opportunity to pick up a Mark Jackson, whom he was familiar with uh, from coaching him in the Clippers, felt it would just be an added piece. And early in the year, unfortunately, Mark put a lot of pressure on himself. Another point when you talk about guards handling the ball, Eric Brown, a former point guard, very tough on those that, that play that position. Eight-1 run by Chicago. Byron Scott forcing it up with the shot clock running down. Here comes Armstrong delivering to Myers. Rejected by Scott, and a foul is called. Well, B.J. Armstrong, not normally the man to handle the ball in the middle of the fast break. He's normally out on a wing, spotting up in a corner. Does a nice job here of sending in Pete Myers, who took it hard to the basket. A follow up on what I was talking to Pete about early in the day is if he still plays one on one with Michael Jordan. It was kind of legendary stories about how Michael used to take him to school early when Pete was first drafted by the Chicago, not drafted, but signed by the Chicago Bulls. And Michael used to kill him. And I said, Well, what happened the last few days? And he just smiled. He said, He killed me. He said, Actually, we were playing for his old locker at their practice site. Oh. Pete took that over. Michael wanted it back, beat him for it in one on one games, but then decided to get it back at feet to get a new rule. Indiana now leading by 10. They've led by as many as 18. Minute and a half remaining in the first half. Workman played by Armstrong. Workman with the step. Rebound, Dale Davis. He has been the story in the first half. Seven points. And 14 rebounds for Dale Davis. Well, Dale missed eight games with those shoulder problems. We say he's back, but he's really not back at 100%, but having an outstanding day. Michael Jordan. And Indiana now leads 45 to 35. So Jordan with a second field goal. He's two of eight. He has seven points. 50 seconds left in the half. Foul is called on Myers. Michael starting to warm up right now, feeling a little bit better that he's knocked a couple of shots down and a couple of free throws, taking it hard to his left and getting in the air quickly over Reggie Miller. Not that Reggie could do that much about it, but Reggie finds himself back at the free throw line. One of the more frequent visitors for a guard. Shoots about between six and seven a game. Reggie now three of three in the first half. From the foul out, he has 14 points in all. Tony Kukoc is back, replacing Corey Blunt. Tony Kukoc not able to get off. He's had two excellent shooting games against the, uh, the Pacers. Tony Kukoc with an 11 for 15 and an 11 for 19 in the, the two previous games. 45 seconds to go in the half, and it's Indiana by 12. Kukoc from Pippen, and for Tony, that is his first field goal. Indiana by 10. Here's some pressure being shown by Chicago. Good defensive sequence by the Bulls. Oh, by the Bulls as Jordan knocked it away. Running on a crossover. And it will be Chicago ball. Well, Johnny Bach not getting a chance to watch this today as he's coaching the Charlotte Hornets, but that's what he used to call unleashing the Dobermans. When Pippen, Jordan, guys like Armstrong get out there and get very frisky and active, they can cause you a lot of problems. Final seconds, first half. Jordan with the jumper. The tip missed. And that will do it. Dale Davis with his 15th rebound. Michael Jordan missed his first six shots. He finishes the first half two for nine from the field. And three out of four from the line. Seven points in a first half that saw Michael trying to find his way. The Bulls trying to adjust. The end result, the Pacers by 10. We'll be back in a moment.
out of the court for the second half. Indiana with the 10-point lead on Chicago. Marv Albert along with uh, Matt Gukas. Jordan in the first half, 19 minutes, 2 of 9 from the field. And the Bulls looking very tentative in that first half. They've been watching him a little bit, but the toughest part for Michael over the next four or five games will be trying to establish his own game and blending in with his teammates who have been battling together for six months. It's going to be a tough task. He's the man that can do it, though. All right, let's take a look at the Miller Lite halftime statistics. Overall, the Bulls only 11 for 33. 33% shooting the Pacers 17 of 39 from the field. There you see the stat line on, on Jordan. Two of nine from the floor. Three of four from the foul line. And this, uh, the big number. Pacers out-rebounding the Bulls 30 to 13. Dale Davis with 15 rebounds in the first half. His career high accomplished on two occasions, 22-15 in the first half. We'll be back with the second half from Market Square right after this. To the start of play in the third quarter, Indiana with a 47-37 lead on Chicago. Pacers have led all the way, and they have led by as many as 18. A look at the leading scorers. Scotty Pippen with 13. B.J. Armstrong, who's hit the uh, three-pointer. He's hit three from downtown. He has 11. Michael Jordan with seven points. While the Indiana Pacers with one man in double figures. Reggie Miller, four of nine from the field. Three of seven from beyond the three-point line with 15 points. Eight apiece for Smiths and McKee. Seven for Dale Davis along with 15 boards. And the numbers on... On Michael Jordan, 19 minutes in the first half. Two of nine from the field, three of four from the line. Two rebounds, an assist, and a steal. Matt, to give you perspective on Michael Jordan looking back on his illustrious career, he has scored in double figures in 666 of his 667 career games. His lowest point total ever, March the 22nd, 1986, when he scored only eight points in a game against the Cavaliers in Cleveland. Well, with his team struggling right now, Michael realizes more than anybody the importance of defense and how it will win you games. Wouldn't be surprised to see the Bulls come out, extend the defense, put a lot of pressure, and create some easy baskets from that defense. And Phil Jackson has B.J. Armstrong with Michael Jordan. Scotty Pippen, Corey Blunt. Will Purdue, Jordan, try to get it to Purdue, who lost it. And Miller gets hit in the head. A little comical sequence at both ends. And Michael's having a little word with Will Purdue on that penetration to say, spread out. Give me that opportunity to draw your defender, and I'll drop the bounce pass to you. Here, the pass being made before eye contact is made. It's and now turnover, and another turnover. And the Bulls give it right back. Pass from uh, Pippen going astray. Opening minute, third quarter. Indiana back to the offense. McKee in a battle with Pippen. And Pippen knocks it aside. Well, before the Bulls had won uh, eight out of their last ten, a big problem for them was coming out in third quarters and getting bothered by pressure already. They've turned the ball over twice. That doesn't figure to happen when you have Michael Jordan on the court. Smith. Doing it from the outside. He has 10 points along with six rebounds. And Indiana leads by 12. Armstrong now played tightly by Jackson, not allowing the three-point shot. And the Bulls deciding to open up the second half with Tony Kukoc on the bench. A very shaky first half by Kukoc. Jordan firing it up with the shot clock running down. Blunt's pass picked off. Couldn't get the shot off. Hey, get out, get out. He isolated against Armstrong, gets it inside. And the foul oh, down there is held by Corey Blunt. Scotty Pippen wow. trying to make things happen to see if he can't get He's Michael Jordan going school. here with a little high screen. And just again, the unfamiliarity, even though these two have communicated on a lot of good basketball plays over the years, just not in sync today. Al Davis in his fourth year out of Clemson, led the ACC in rebounding. 
three straight years. Last season, averaged just under 12 points per game. Did that with limited range, but uh, he is on the floor to get the ball, to do it off the boards, and that has certainly been the case here this afternoon. 13-point lead for Indiana. Reggie Miller doing a good job in fronting Michael Jordan. Scotty Pippen hits the three. Oh, Scotty Pippen. That's his first from downtown. 16 for Pippen. And the Pacers lead by 10. Chicago Bulls come in with a record of 34 and 31. They've won three in a row. Eight of the last 10. Block on the rebound. Pippen for Armstrong. E.J. Armstrong, and it's down to an eight-point Indiana lead. The Pacers at 39 and 24, on top of the Central by a half game over Charlotte. They've won their last two, and they have won five of the last six. Here's the double on Smith. Jackson gets it to Dale Davis, facing a double team. Armstrong with the steal. Be a loose ball foul second. call. The first the outside ball. official indicating knocked out of bounds, but Purdue is called for the personal, his second. Well, B.J. Armstrong digging inside to knock this ball loose. Also looked like he got a part of the arm of Dale Davis as he would not have mind putting him on the line, but starting the fast break, he got that ball back to score his 13th point. Jackson met by the double team as Jordan comes over to help. We've seen time and time again over his career the steal and then the drive for the bucket. Jordan lost it. Jackson with the steal. Miller with Pippen ball and Pippen with the foul. Oh, and Scotty Pippen with a shove of Reggie Miller. Good job of Scotty Pippen to hustle back and try to block that shot. Did get a piece of the ball, also got a piece of Reggie Miller, and then they got tangled up, and then a little extra shove. Watch it again. And watch the little extra shove with the left arm by Scotty Pippen after they come down here. And you see the left arm and the push to the back, and we will have a technical foul. Technical foul assessed on Pippen. Miller will shoot the technical. Indiana 53. Chicago, 44, 8.24 remaining in this third quarter. Once again, we'd uh, like to welcome those who have been watching Utah and Charlotte, Marv Albert with Matt Gurkis and Bob Rashad from Market Square Arena. Reggie Miller extending to a 10-point Pacer lead. Well, we talked earlier in the ballgame that Phil Jackson mentioned that it probably wouldn't be too long before he'd think about making a change in the starting lineup. Nothing against Tony Kukoc, but now with Michael Jordan back, it changes things. So what they need in there is a bigger body, somebody to bang around inside, box out, get some rebounds, play some defense, and Corey Blunt getting the call here in the third quarter. You don't need all of your best offensive players on the floor at the start of the game or the start of the third quarter. Scotty Pippen setting it up. He has Michael Jordan down low. Miller got a piece of it. Recovered by Purdue. Jackson leads a three on one. Here's Jackson. And the Indiana Pacers starting to take advantage of every Chicago Bull mistake. Whether it's a block shot, a ball knocked loose, they are just flat out whipping the Bulls down at the other end of the floor. Six straight points by the Pacers. They lead by 12. You are watching the NBA on NBC. 
but he puts the ball over his head. He doesn't expect anybody to steal, but it's a fundamental error by Smith as he put it behind his head. The lightning quick hands of Michael Jordan to strip it and finish the playoff at the other end. Reggie Miller thought about stepping up and trying to take the charge. It looked like Michael was ready to jump over him if he had it. As we said, starting this third quarter, Marvin, Michael realizes things are just not very smooth at the offensive end in their half-court sets, so they got to make it happen at the defensive end. Well, point Indiana Lee. Let's go over to Ahmad Rashad. All right, Mark. Thanks. I talked to Michael at halftime, and he was telling me that he indeed had butterflies when the game started, but he was trying to adjust himself to the pace of the game. That's pretty much took him out of it physically. He also said the offense was out of sync because you have to realize he hadn't played with these players quite in a long time. He was trying to familiarize himself with the players on the floor. Mark? All right, Ahmad. That is a goaltending call, so Jordan gets credit. And he has hit double figures. 11 points for Michael. He is now 4 for 13 from the field. Pacers 56. And the Bulls 46. Jackson and Miller in the backcourt. McKee, Smits, and Dale Davis up front. Shot clock is down to 6. Jackson gets it inside to McKee. And a foul call. Well, Mark Jackson realized how lucky he was to get that pass through there. He threw it. He almost wanted to pull it back as Scotty Pippen was in the lane, but he had his back turned. That ball able to snake through to Derek McKee, who's been a little bit more aggressive offensively as Michael Jordan is saying to Scotty, keep your eye on the ball. You would have had a steal, partner. Foul was called on Wennington. The Bulls. To this point, getting very little out of the center position. Purdue is 0 for 3. Wennington has not taken a shot. Longley 0 for 2. And Tony Kukoc, only 1 for 5 from the field, has not played in this third quarter. Corey Blunt starting the third. Here's Will Purdue. It will count, and the foul. And Will getting a little encouragement this time from Michael Jordan. The last time Will took the ball to basket, he just put up a little flipper and not very strong this time. Still not able to finish hard at the rim and, and stuff the ball in there, but doing his best, got fouled on the play. Michael Jordan trying to encourage Will Purdue, who's doing a good job at the defensive end on Rick Smith before Rick gets the ball. Smith does have 10 points, but so far, good defense by Big Will. And the foul on Smith, who picked up his third. Indiana 58 and Chicago 49. Five minutes in, third quarter. Quick release by Reggie Miller. 19 for Reggie. Pacers 60 and the Bulls 49. Huntington setting the pick. Jordan sweeping by but went off the back rim. Recovered by Dow Davis as Rick Smith hit the deck. Jackson. Yes. Well, the Pacers responding to the double team as Mark Jackson was wide open. Jackson with the steal. Jackson behind the back. He will start it all over again. Good job by the point guard, Mark Jackson, exploring the fast break. Not there. The knowledgeable Indiana fans appreciating that kind of small nuance in half-court basketball. Fast break, not there. Pull it back out. Set something up. Got blocked down to three. McKee. Indiana with a 15-point lead. Derek McKee with 14 points. And that is number four on Ray Smith, who is foul prone. He will sit down, and Antonio Davis will come on. Smith's departing, and three ten Davis points, back in the of and seven rebounds. The Bulls have been tentative with some of their passes as Michael will go to the bench for a rest, replaced by Pete Myers and Tony Kukoc coming in for Will Perdue. And right before that, they, the Bulls have brought in Phil Wennington to replace Corey Blunt to put him in that big forward spot as Phil is trying to keep a couple of extra big bodies in there against the outstanding rebounding. And Indiana 
has come out shooting well in the third quarter. Six of seven from the field. Bulls have hit five of ten. Oh, Armstrong nearly had nowhere to go. Down a six on the 24. Pippen looking for the shot, can't find it. Kukoc has to fire and hits! Tony Kukoc for the three with the shot clock running down. It's only his second field goal. It cuts it to a 12-point. Pacer lead just under five minutes to go. Third quarter. Ball away from the ball. Pete Meyer is holding Reggie Miller. Well, Tony Kukac had been trying to post up Dale Davis. He would have much more success by taking him away from the basket and possibly driving on him. He had to launch this three to beat the shot clock, but Tony Kukoc has been silent so far as he seems a little bit mesmerized with the whole situation. Well, you can understand that uh, he might have come in with the same butterflies that Michael Jordan mentioned uh, to Ahmad Rashad. Michael Jordan has a talk of the emotional response of Tony Kukoc when Tony had signed with the Bulls, felt that he was going to join a Chicago team that had Michael Jordan as his teammate, and then Jordan announced his retirement, and, and uh, Michael said he, he really he couldn't believe how, how emotional Kukoc uh, reacted. He was so disappointed that he, he had wanted to play with Michael. So uh, these are big moments uh, for the second-year player out of Croatia. And some of his comments over the last couple of weeks where he did not want to get his hopes up because he did not want to possibly get disappointed again if Michael, Michael had made the other decision. Shot clock at five. They double up on Pippen. Kuko checking the clock, gets it off. And it's an air ball, so a 24-second violation. Well, Tony Kukoc is a good post player against smaller players. But when he's being guarded by a Derek McKee, who's really a small forward, but a 6'11 small forward, or one of the Davis, he's better at taking the ball out about 17, 18 feet, facing up and trying to drive into a seam. Reggie Miller isolated against Pete Myers. Myers got picked off. Miller not able to hit the three. Deanna responding, getting back. Pippen. Yes. Nice move by Scotty Pippen, although the Pacers were able to get back. Chicago was trying to break. And then Pippen got it to a 12-point Indiana advantage. Jackson, the one-time New York Knick, one-time Los Angeles Clippers had a solid game. They double up on McKee. Mitchell. Sam Mitchell extends to a 14-point lead. Now, McKee is a tough cover for Scottie Pippen inside. He has a little bit of a height advantage, can shoot over, and that's why the double team came. And McKee smartly got the ball outside to the open Mitchell. Armstrong beating Jackson oh. with the dribble, and it's Weddington with the slam. Uh, Bill does that about four or five times a year. <laughs> when he does it in either old Chicago Stadium, which is no longer, or the new United Center, the crowd goes wild. He just takes a gamble, takes a run at it, and finishes off the play. Indiana with a 12-point lead. We come up on three minutes left in the third. Strong move by... Antonio Davis, who also paid for it, and he was fouled, took a shot in the head. Well, a running start by Phil Wennington out from about the right elbow area, guessing just right, and the ball coming right off the rim, right where he is able to finish, and Tomahawk it through. Wennington called for the foul, sending Davis to the line, a hand for Reggie Miller sitting down. He'll get a rest, please, with 21 points. Antonio Davis at the free throw line. In his second year out of Texas, El Paso, a second-round draft pick back in 1990. He played in Europe for three years in Italy and Greece and before signing on with Indiana. Michael Jordan now returning. So Michael certainly getting the playing time. Opened up with nine minutes in the first quarter. Saw considerable action in the second. 19 minutes and all for the half. 28 minutes thus far for Jordan's beginning to show some signs. Doing it off the dribble here against Byron Scott. Faced the double team, got it out to Myers. Pete Myers. Pacer 69. Bulls 58. It actually turned into a little bit of a triple team, which really opened up the lane for Myers, who made a nice move going to his left. Now Jordan defensively facing Fleming. Fleming and Scott now in the backcourt. Last touch by Pippen with 11 on the 24. 
And a timeout being called by Larry Brown. 2.35 remaining in the third. You're watching the NBA on NBC. Championship of 91, 1992. The Bulls knocking off Portland in Chicago for a, a second title. And then a third straight defeating Charles Barkley and the, and the Phoenix Suns in six games. That 1993 NBA championship squad. A host of familiar names and a host of changes have been made. As you can see, that group no longer with the Bulls, only Armstrong. Pippen and Purdue remain, along with Michael Jordan. Revamp franchise. When you look back at last year, it was truly amazing the job that the Phil Jackson and the Bulls did. That's a 24-second violation. Chicago finishing a surprising 55 and 27, second of the Central, only two games back in that first season without. Michael Jordan, they were third overall in the East, and then in the playoffs, they swept Cleveland in the Eastern Conference semifinals, lost in a grueling series to the Knicks in seven games. Kukos trying to shake off Mitchell, draws the foul. Mitchell. Sam Mitchell is picking up his second personal. And Indiana last year with a 47-35 and 35 record, a strong finish, and they did the job in the playoffs. They swept Orlando in the first round, beat Atlanta in six. And they went to seven against the Knicks. Jordan firing the three. And a loose ball foul yeah, is called ball. again yeah. against a Mitchell. Ball. Well, once Michael gets familiar with the new three-point oh, line, I'm sure he's going to be a much better three-point shooter. If you remember a couple of years in their career, he worked hard in the offseason, came back, improved his three-point shooting, but he is still suffering from the rust, and the shooting is suffering most right now. Jordan is now four for 15. Myers posting up on Fleming. Who coach with the fake? Shot clock at eight. Jordan for Kuko. Yes! Michael Jordan with the feed for Tony Kukos to bring the Bulls with a nine. A minute 35 left in the third quarter. Kukos on the steal. Try to save it. Lands in the, uh, in the Chicago front court, but handled by Fleming. Well, Michael was zigging when he probably should have been zagging, but that pass thrown behind him to spoil a chance for a Chicago fast break, and a thunderous Jordan finish. Has been getting the playing time coming out as a as a third guard very much into the rotation. Here's Jordan spinning his way, putting it up for Pippen, and he draws the foul. Well, the last two times Michael Jordan has had the ball in the offensive end, he has become a penetrator. He is, in fact, the point guard right now. Being guarded by Byron Scott, beats him on the penetration, finds Tony Kukos coming in along the baseline. Excellent penetration, drawing the defense, and Michael knows that he is drawing it and can find open people as Scottie Pippen able to get to the free throw line. I'd like to welcome those of you who have been watching Charlotte. And Utah, Charlotte with a 100-92 lead in the final minutes of the fourth quarter. Go, 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 go. Here at Market Square, it's the Pacer 71 and the Bulls 61 with less than a minute to go in the third. Marv Albert with Matt Kukic, Samad Rashad, Bob Costas, Michael Jordan to this point. Four of 15, 11 points, three assists. Chicago in a two-for-one situation with 40 seconds to go in this third quarter. Look for a quick shot coming. Kukos spinning his way. And back comes McKee. Now to 25 seconds to go in the third. And well, they got the quick shot, but not a good one. Off the trap, foul call. Pippen and Myers mining on Scott, and Pippen is... Called for the foul, his second. Bulls are over the limit, so Byron Scott to the line. Byron Scott, after 10 years of the L.A. Lakers, signed as a free agent with Indiana last December. Member of three 
Laker championship teams. Haywood Workman about to check into the ball game. He has a Band-Aid over his right eye now. He had one on the left side of his face before. When he first came out of the floor, he had it on the back of his head. I don't know if this is some kind of superstition or whatever. Just a cut that is moving around. <laughs> and Haywood is his back. Haywood Workman, a major surprise last year after spending time with Atlanta and, and Washington. He's able to do the job without having true point guard skills. Very tough player. And, and a, a good player defensively, and that's what uh, Larry Brown appreciated last year. But Mark Jackson is back as the starting point guard. They double up on Jordan. Time running out here on the third. Jordan played by Fleming. Down to five seconds. Now they double up. Here's Jordan slicing his way, setting up Weddington. What an eight, ten seconds to go. And the third as Workman. And that's the end of the third quarter with the Pacers 73 and the Bulls 63. Byron Scott not wanting to let Vern Fleming face Jordan. 101 comes out but overruns the play, leaving another wide open lane for Michael to get in there, draw the defense, and get the easy one for Bill Wennington. So Michael Jordan setting up Bill Wennington to conclude matters here in the third. Coming up in a moment, we'll pause for these messages from your local station. PC Sports Matt just getting younger and younger. It's our youth movement. How about number 23? That's, that's out of date these days. <laughs> Michael opting to wear his baseball uniform number uh, 45. Certainly thinking of marketing possibilities down the road. Michael uh, in action with number 45 and making the transition back to the basketball court. Fourth quarter underway, Pacers 73 and the Bulls 63. With some 21 months after Michael Jordan's last appearance in an NBA game. Michael opening up this fourth quarter guarding Vern Fleming. Antonio Davis. And last touch by the Bulls. But meanwhile, despite the fact that this has not been an effective game for the Bulls, they are hanging around, down by only 10 as this fourth quarter gets started. Mainly because their defense was much more aggressive in the third quarter. They shot the ball better, but the reason why they're still down 10 is the six turnovers that they had in that third quarter. And the whistle away from the ball is against Indiana. Iron Scott called for the, the offensive foul. At one point, Indiana led by as many as 18. Pacers with a, a good shooting. Third quarter, 8 for 10 overall in the third. Michael there setting up Steve Kerr coming off the stagger, but good defense by the Pacers shut it off, and a nice move inside by big Luke Longley. Eight point, Indiana lead. Reggie Miller getting set to check back in. Fleming and Scott on the backcourt. Smith's playing with four fouls up front with McKee and Antonio Davis. Not a good shot by Smith's. There's Jordan putting the move on. And Michael looking over to the official on the baseline, trying to figure out why he didn't get a foul ball there. He initiated the contact into Smith's. Smith's. To a 10 point pacer lead. He was just so comfortable facing the basket from about 15 to 18 feet out front and really prefers that left box where he wheels across the middle for a little rolling hook. Lead and tenant for Kerr. Fleming for Davis. Smith off the ball fake and a hand check being indicated by Dick Pavetta. Well, Michael Jordan with spots a little lane here, knows he's in trouble with the seven foot four Smith, but you know, shoved that right hip into Smith, looking for the call, not really complaining loudly, but you could tell he felt 
he got bumped on this play. One more look at it as Michael just shoved the little hip into, into Smith, which did follow the shot. And at the other end, Longley is called for the foul. Reggie Miller is back, replacing Derek McKee. Solid game for McKee, 14 points. Well, he does so many good things on the basketball floor that you don't notice. It's all the little things. And, of course, Larry would like to become more and more aggressive offensively. Luke Longley, Byron Scott running into Luke Longley. That is number four on Longley. On Friday night in the game against Milwaukee, in a rare occurrence because the Bulls have not been a, a successful comeback team, they did overcome a 15-point deficit after three quarters to beat the Bucs. That is a rare comeback. The Bulls have suffered this season a very poor third quarter. And uh, that has gotten Phil Jackson crazy. Remember several weeks ago, he uh, closed the, the locker room after a game on a Friday night. A long meeting with his coaches the uh, following day trying to solve the problem. Well, he may be on the way to solving that problem with uh, number 45. He's say they've had number 45 rejoining his club. That's a nice player to add late in the season. Off the steal, Fleming. Jordan got a piece of it. Fleming ran into his own man. Here's Scott. Not a pretty sequence, but Aaron Scott gives the Pacers a 14-point ball. Fumbling, stumbling, Burton. <laughs> Did a good job, Aaron Fleming, of finally corralling that thing and getting it to the open man. Pippen backing his way. He got the only with a shot clock running down. Rebounded by Jordan, who took it up. And he's fouled. Michael Jordan will go to the line. Well, Vern Fleming. Never really getting a handle on this thing, trying to run the fast break. On the crossover there, bothered by Kerr. He lost it. He got bumped by his own man, Smith. But Byron Scott in the right place at the right time to finish it off with the jumper. Antonio Davis called for the foul. Timeout is taken with 9-14 left in the fourth. Golden State battles Shaq and the top team in the East, the Magic, next Sunday on NBC. My dad once said... 90% of sports is from the neck up. Experience tells me he was right. They say only the strong survive. Experience tells me it's true. Now, I know I'm just a rookie, but I see what it takes to succeed. Hard work, strength, experience. You never know when you'll come face to face with a regular looking phone wired to a no-name company. Will you and your card be rejected? We're sorry. Will your call cost a lot more than you think? How can you be sure you'll get AT&T and get through at a good price? Know the code. Dial 1-800-CALL-ATT. For card calls, you'll always get AT&T's best deal if you know the code. Dial 1-800-C-A-L-L-A-T-T. -T. And you'll never worry about no-name phone company charges again. Your true voice. Hello from Plank Road, where our man Paul has some visitors, the Plank Road Polar Bear. Each year, the polar bears seek ultimate refreshment by throwing themselves into icy cold waters. We suggest an alternative, Ice Brewed Ice House. Ice brewed so there's never any watered-down taste, just more of what you want in a beer. Ice Brewed Ice House. Icy smooth refreshment without the annoying frostbite. Thanks and enjoy. Miller Genuine Draft presents Genuine Moments. Today's Miller Genuine Draft Genuine Moment goes back to April 12, 1987. The Bulls versus the Pacers, and a fellow by the name of Michael Jordan had an enormous game. 53 points for Michael, the most points ever scored by a Chicago Bull against the Indiana Pacers, and just two off the single-game scoring mark against Indiana, which is 55 points scored by the Spurs' George Gervin in 1980. That is the stat line today for Michael Jordan, only 4 of 16 from the field. He is headed to the free throw line. In recognition of that moment, Miller Genuine Draft will donate $1,000 to the 
Berkeley Marshall scholarship fund. Jordan, three of four from the free throw line. Of course, Michael has had unparalleled history measured with the uh, record tying seven straight scoring titles. David Robinson winning it last year. Three most valuable player awards, seven first team all NBA mentions, six all defensive team awards. Well, the ball's hanging around, and this one have been down 10 12. They know they have to get it around 10 or 8 under six minutes. Again, trying to make something happen with that defense after the free throw, but not having a player like Horace Grant, who really sets the tone with that pressure in the backcourt, really hurting the Bulls. Jordan working off the pick. Rebound, Jordan. Try to alter the shot with Smith right there. Here's a three on one. Miller pulls out for three. Well, Reggie going for the kill there right now, leading by 14, trying to put this thing away, or at least at, th at this particular juncture with that pull up jumper on the fast break from beyond the arc. Who goes past the open shot, and then a bad pass. Miller on the run. The levels to Plummer. And you can get it in twos as well. Normally, Reggie Miller on the catching end of those kind of plays shows that he is unselfish, wants to get his teammates involved most of the time. Indiana by 16 points. Kerr for three. Kerr with the straightaway three-pointer. That is his first of the day, and the Pacers lead 83-70. And Michael Jordan walking back on defense, looking over to Phil Jackson, pointing to himself, needing a breather at this particular juncture. He has played 33 minutes. Seven and a half to go in the fourth. Here's Scott. Offensive foul. Dick Pavetta, the official, saying that Byron Scott on that penetration took the left arm and warded off the defender. Byron not happy with it, but I think an accurate call by Dick Pavetta. Number five on Scott, and that'll bring Darren McKee back into the ballgame as Michael Jordan will get a rest. That's Byron Scott coming across the lane and keep an eye on that left arm as he used that very, very quickly, I might add, to ward off the defender. The applause for Vern Fleming as he sits down. A steady performance by, by Vern, who just recently played in his 800th NBA career game. Pippen for three. Yes, Scotty Pippen. 22 points. And the Pacers lead 83-73. Scotty knows right now with Jordan on the bench, he only has one other offensive player out on the court for him. At least he's shooting. As far as shooting is concerned, he's shooting. From beyond the three-point line, Miller has 24. Longley with the ball pick. Goes and spits again. Nice move by Luke Longley. Indiana 86 and Chicago 75. Beautiful move by Luke, who feels when he gets the ball in that post offense, it's for him to score. It isn't, isn't always, but when he can make that kind of move, it's very effective. Miller, he thought he was fouled by Myers. Continues the discussion as he moves to the defensive end. Corey Blunt, Scotty Pippen, met by the double team. Good defense by the Pacers. Myers rejected by Dale Davis. Warmly with the save, but it's a 24 second. 24 seconds. Uh, Reggie Miller still upset with the official, felt he got hit on the last play. This time, coming off that screen, shuffles the feet a little bit, but Pete Myers getting hung up on the pick, and that left Reggie Miller to finger the seams, read the label, and drain the three. And here, after the next three-pointer, when he got hit on the arm by Pete Myers, continues to complain to the referee.
Welcome back to Market Square Arena where the Indiana Pacers lead the Chicago Bulls 86-75 with six minutes and two seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. We'd like to welcome those of you who have been watching Utah and Charlotte and the Hornets over the Jazz 108 to 104 and the Charlotte Hornets now show a record of 40 up and 25 down so they are in a virtual tie for the Central Division lead with the 39 and 24 of the Indiana Pacers. The Hornets stopping a three game losing streak. Utah losing on the road which is unusual. They are now 23 and 11 on the road. They still lead the Midwest. Now by two games in front of San Antonio. Shot clock is down to two as McKee comes up short. And it is a 24-second violation. The stat line on Michael Jordan, who has just checked back in. He has played 33 minutes. He missed his first six shots and then was able to connect four of 18 overall for 13 points. Five of six from the line, four assists, three rebounds. Certainly in a process of adjustment. Looking a bit rusty. On the other hand, we have seen some terrific flashes. Oh! Michael now four for 19. It will get better for Michael and the Bulls. Well, the defense of the second half of the Chicago Bulls much, much better. In fact, the Indiana Pacers have no second chance points. So the, the move of starting Corey Blunt playing Bill Wennington a little at the big forward spot has worked for Chicago at least defensively here in the second half. A show the ball move by Jordan. Now guarded by McKee. Really off the nice angle pass from Jordan. A terrific, and Michael I appreciated that move by Longley to keep moving and then stop dead in the lane with the defender on his back. That's why he got such good position. Pacers 86, and the Bulls 77. McKee went underneath the hoop. Armstrong has a three on two. Pacers able to hustle back. Pippen. Oh, Scotty Pippen driving the lane. And it's down to a seven-point Pacer lead. Hanging around, just hanging around. And that's dangerous when you have number 45 on the floor. 6-0 run by Chicago. Miller, yes! That's a two-pointer. A quick release of Reggie Miller extends to an 88-79 Indiana lead. 26 points for Miller. Indiana 88, Chicago 81, 15 from Michael Jordan. The Pacers right now really don't have an inside-outside game. You could throw it into McKee and possibly get a double team, but that's why it's been hard for Reggie Miller to get a lot of shots up this year. Miller gets it with another one. Pippen with the rebound. Seven-point deficit. Chicago in possession. Jordan. Gets it to Pippen. There's Corey Blunt, and he drew the foul. Well, Reggie Miller has to depend on baseline screens like that to get open shots, and he also has to get kickouts from penetration. But Michael Jordan, hard drive off the dribble to take it to the open spot, get in the air quickly, and nicely using glass. Non shooting foul. On Antonio Davis, who departs, replaced by Dale Davis. 3.05 remaining in the fourth quarter. Seven point Indiana lead. They've led by as many as 18. Pippen for three. Rebound block. Armstrong backs to three point territory, and he hit it. The lead is down to five. Jackson calls for time with two. In the fourth quarter. Well, here are the Bulls taking advantage of a, sh a second shot opportunity as Corey Blunt working hard. And a lot of times the defense will sag in there after the open shot, and that will enable the three point shooters to spot up behind the line.
hoping for a three-pointer as Corey Blunt will kick out to B.J. Armstrong. But keep an eye on B.J.'s right foot right on the line as he releases that shot. Michael trying to get the three, but it was ruled a two-point shot. Five-point lead for Indiana. 2.44 remaining. In this fourth quarter, 16-5 run by Chicago. Four minutes into this fourth quarter, the Pacers were up by 16. So the Bulls trying to make it another good run as they did on Friday night. Coming up short, and the rebound is fielded by Armstrong. The Chicago Bulls very much alive. Jordan posting on Miller. No help at this point. Jordan not able to hit, and it's rebounded by Dale Davis. Number 18 off the boards for Davis. McKee with the move. A great shot by Derek McKee. He now has 16 with 2.03 left. And the fourth. The Pacers lead 90 to 83, and the Bulls take a timeout. Back in a moment at Market Square, you're watching the NBA on NBC. Jordan looking up at the scoreboard to check. Score and time has gotten plenty of minutes for himself. A little rusty from the field, or we should say very rusty, at just 5 for 21. Not taking advantage of a possible hand check here. Settles for jump shot, and then the Indiana Pacers will turn it into a wide open jumper on the break for Derek McKee, as once again Mark Jackson finds the open man. Well, let's see, Matt. Wearing number 45. Michael Jordan, 5 for 21, <laughs> only a 24% shooter. <laughs> Looking back at his career, wearing number 23 was a 52% shooter. You think they'll stop making all those shirts now? Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> Timeout rundown, Chicago 3 and a 20. And they have a 2 and a 20. The Bulls in possession, just under 2 minutes. Remaining on the 4. Jordan swinging for the jumper. the foul. You know, when Michael looks at the tape of this, he's going to see that a lot of the moves were there, a lot of the quickness, the good and sharp ball handling, just a lot of shots early in this ball game did not fall, which I think started to make him think. Here's a typical Michael Jordan move, good defense by Reggie Miller to turn him away, Michael hanging in the air, he just cannot get these shots to drop. Luke Longley missing on his first free throw, looking at 82% free throw shooter. Bulls 16 of 24 for nine. Pacers 90. And the Bulls 84. And talking to Chicago players. Jordan with the steal. And there's Jordan going. Well, he dumped it off the block and it drew the foul. Looked like he would challenge Smiths. As you say, the moves are there. He's getting the open looks, but in talking to the coaches and various Chicago players, they say that uh, the jump shot was not there in practice. At least Michael Jordan type jump shots. Well, that steal came off the Bulls' track there, and it looked like the Pacers had it beaten easily, and then just put, and it really was not that bad a pass. Yes, it was a cross-court pass, but Michael so quick into the passing lane. Most teams, in particular the Pacers today, not used to seeing players so quick on that pass. Race. So it's so hard to practice against it, not that the Pacers have any chance to prepare. What a 52% free throw shooter hitting one of two. It's a five-point lead. Pressure by Chicago. A minute 35 remaining on the fourth. Indiana's led by as many as 18. Armstrong with a steal. Beating Pippen. Scotty Pippen cuts it to a three-point lead. And you can hear the Chicago contingent applauding the efforts of the Bulls. And it's down to three with a minute and 15. Remaining on the fourth. Oh. Spence. And it's two points. Reggie Miller with 28. And he gives Indiana a five-point lead. Well, the Bulls have been so successful with the pressure defense. And then down by three, they gambled one too many times. But that's the first two points for Indiana in the second half off the glass. Under a minute remaining, fourth quarter. Pippen, yes, that's a two-pointer for Scotty Pippen. Pacers 92, the Bulls 89. 
We are down to 45 seconds in the fourth quarter. Jordan looking for the steal on Smiths. Ten on the shot clock. Jackson played by Armstrong. Shot clock at five. McKee forced it. Handled by Block. And the ball in the hands of Jordan. 25 seconds remaining. The pick set by Longley. There's Pippen for Pippen. seconds left in the fourth quarter. Larry Brown waving off the timeout. They're just going to play it out. Down to 10. Jackson guarded by Armstrong. Down to 5. Sets up Miller. And a foul on Jordan. Michael did not want to make the contact. Both Jordan and Miller are shaken up. First of the final two minutes. The Bulls have that foul to give, so Miller will not go to the line. Three seconds remaining in this fourth quarter. And both Michael Jordan and Reggie Miller are obviously hurting. Well, Reggie Miller popped off that screen wide open, and Michael Jordan running at him, and then Reggie in trying to elude Jordan taking it to the baseline, and they got tangled up. And right away, Michael put up his arm. I don't know, so uh, hand him. Not so much say that he committed the foul. Let's watch again as Michael trying to keep contact and Reggie eludes that contact and you see running at him and now watch the leg. Reggie's right and Michael Jordan's right and both of them in a lot of discomfort right now. A bizarre conclusion with the Chicago Bulls coming from behind on a 25 to 9 run. And the two marquee players, Michael Jordan, Reggie Miller, end up on the floor. We'll be right back. Mother shot back at Market Square Arena. And on that last collision between Reggie Miller and Michael Jordan, where their legs sort of collided, Michael Jordan came out of this with a cramp. That was his problem. And Reggie Miller, almost a, a bruise. Their legs hit together, and Reggie Miller, the both of them appear to be all right. Reggie's still hobbling just a little bit. So it remains to be seen if Reggie Miller will still be in the game. Michael Jordan, as I said before, just suffering a cramp. Mark? All right, Ahmad, we're down to three seconds remaining in regulation. The Chicago Bulls with a... A surge in his fourth quarter have tied the game at, at 92. That's the timeout rundown, Bulls. Three full timeouts plus a 20. The Pacers, one plus a 20. And the Bulls have a delay of game to try to find out what the play was. With They found out a little bit about where Mark Jackson was going. Of course, the number one option here would be Byron Scott, their best perimeter shooter. And now a 20-second timeout is taken by Larry Brown. So he'll want to make an adjustment in the end down to one full timeout. Reggie Miller remaining on the Indiana bench. Michael Jordan staying on the Chicago bench. A 25-9 run over the last seven and a half minutes by the Bulls. For the second straight game, they come from way back. Great sign for Phil Jackson and the Bulls. And you can see things building as Michael Jordan is finding a rhythm, as we have been discussing, not able to hit his shots, but certainly getting the good looks and certainly instrumental in the Chicago comeback. And the Bulls did it with their defense and keeping Indiana off the glass and making some timely jumpers, in particular, uh, B.J. Armstrong and Scotty Pippen with the major three there. Now, a guy to keep your eye on here is Rick Smith after a pick is set because he presents a big target. Can catch and then make another move to score. McKee throwing in for Jackson. Back to McKee for the shot. And we go to overtime. The Chicago Bulls and the Indiana Pacers head to our overtime session at Market Square. The Bulls 92 and the Pacers 92. Back in a moment. 
Indianapolis on a day that saw Michael Jordan make his return. Turns out to be a good ball game. Tied at uh, 92 as we head to overtime. And the word on Reggie Miller, Ahmad uh, Rashad, uh, passing on to us that uh, he is through uh, for the game, suffering a right thigh contusion. And the Pacers became very perimeter-oriented in the last five, six minutes of the fourth quarter, and now they lose their best perimeter shooter. Rick Smith has to become the first option for the Pacers right now. And apparently Michael Jordan is all right. He is back on the floor. In the fourth quarter, though, it was Scottie Pippen with 12 of his 31, including a couple of big threes down the stretch to send this game into overtime. Indiana controlling the opening tip. Michael Jordan has played 39 minutes, 5 of 22 from the field. And a foul is called. Rick Smith on the uh, double team, hit by Luke Longley. Well, they do go right into Rick Smith, and Longley does the smart thing. Takes away the middle from Smith, but commits the quick foul. Aaron Scott facing a double team. They go right back to Smith, working against Longley. Shot clock at 10. Smith. George now guarded by Scott. Longley, Blunt, Pippen, up front, Armstrong, Jordan in the backcourt. Jordan gets inside, trying to get it to Longley. Shot clock at three. Jordan has to pump it. One minute gone by in overtime. Neither team has scored. The game tied at 92. Dale Davis for Mark Jackson. Shot clock at six. Jackson. Jackson on the foul. Well, a whole bunch of people hit that. Mark Jackson will get credit for it. I think Corey Blunt got a piece of it as well for one of the rare second shot opportunities for the Pacers in this second half in overtime. Blunt keeping it alive, getting a new 24. For the Bulls, this is their sixth overtime game. Nice back to that's his fourth block. Oh, what a tough inside defender. Beautiful bounce pass from Luke Longley. And Corey Blunt not able to take it to the rim strong enough. And that enabled Dale Davis to get back in there and slot it out. However, the Bulls do recapture the ball. Michael Jordan. Yes. Michael Jordan. And the game is tied at 94. 17 for Jordan. Chicago 1-4 in, in overtime games this season. Pacers have won two. They've lost four. Oh, Scott with the answer. Comes right back at Jordan. And the Pacers lead 96 to 94. Just under three minutes to go in overtime. Well, the Bulls had a lot of success coming down the stretch with just spreading the floor and creating that kind of penetration. Jordan. Davis ripping it down. Rebound number 19 for Davis. Scott trying to get it to Smith. Oh, Michael Jordan popping out. Wide open for the jump shot. And now starting to feel it with the familiar tongue starting to get out there. And the matchup. Jordan against Scott. Waves Longley over. Goes to the crossover. Changes his mind. Did not force it. Pippen. Air ball. Knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Smith. Chicago maintains possession with four on the 24. It's so typical of the Chicago offense. When they try to run something set, they invariably wear down the shot clock and uh -huh. wind up having to take tough shots like that. Timeout is being called. 2.14 left in overtime. The Pacers lead by two. Early something about Willis Reed. Well, like Willis Reed in that, uh, that game where he came out. Reggie Miller had just come out, talked to the trainer, and said that he wants to go back into the game. They're discussing it right now. As you can see, he has taken the ice off of his leg and has told the trainer he's prepared to go back and play. Mark? Mark reporting on our conversations during commercial breaks now, I see. 
come off. That's one of those kinds of injuries where it's going to be very, very sore later tonight and tomorrow, but putting ice on it quickly and the rest of your body still relatively warm, that it's possible that he could go in there for a last-second type shot at the end of the overtime period. On the shot clock as we resume. And we get the whistle. Delay of game warning, Indiana. Really, delay of game warning. Charge on Indiana. Derek McKee not giving the proper room to Scotty Pippen on the inbound. And now they're going to put uh, 10 seconds on the shot clock instead of the four. It's a big break for the Chicago Bulls in this situation. All being explained, Larry Brown begrudgingly accepting that there are now 10 seconds remaining on the 24. Shot clock down to six. Jordan lost the grip. Pippen on the recovery. And the ball goes to Indiana. Well, Michael's just disgusted with himself right now in that situation, trying to get into the lane and just mishandling the ball. And that's going to happen for a while. All these little things that rarely happen to Michael Jordan are happening for him today. Indiana with the ball. They lead by two. Jackson behind the back for Spence. Spence. He had it deflected. Kept it out by Dale Davis. He's rejected. And a foul against Chicago. Foul committed by Corey Block. Well, all the attention was surrounding Rick Smith as he was trying to make a move into the lane. Everybody trying to block the shot, or at least three people, and that left Dale Davis, who has been doing major damage on the offensive glass, all alone there to do battle with Michael Jordan. Dale Davis with his 20th rebound. That's a season high, but very shaky at the line. Only 53% from the foul line, and he is 2 of 5 this afternoon. Now Steve Kerr checking back in. Replacing Corey Blunt, Phil Jackson looking for the offense. So Blunt sits down and Chicago with a combination now of Kerr, Armstrong, Jordan, Pippen, and Longley. And with both B.J. Armstrong and Steve Kerr out on the floor, spreading it, getting it out on the way beyond that three-point line, gives more room for Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan to operate by getting into the lane and creating something. Smith sets down. Davis connecting on one of two. Indiana leads 97 94. A minute 45 remaining in overtime. They isolate Jordan on Scott. Yes. Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan comes up hobbling. Cuts it down to one. A minute 32 remaining in overtime. And Indiana calls for time. You saw Michael hobble off after hitting that jump shot. Here, Michael Jordan with very poor spacing on the weak side, just able to out quick and get in the air over Byron Scott. And the leg that he hurt or had cramped earlier in that collision with Reggie Miller was the right leg. This time, Michael is pulling down the sleeve with a problem with the left one. So Jordan now 7 for 26 for 19 points in his 42 minutes. Reminder at the conclusion of this game, and we are in overtime at a 32 to go. One-point lead for Indiana. When we wrap it up, we'll send it back to Hannah Storm at our New York studios, and she will explain why Phil Sims has decided to remain in broadcasting. He has signed with NBC Sports rather than sign up as a member of the uh, Cleveland Browns. And Hannah will fill us in on that. It's got to be a lot safer at NBC. <laughs> in most cases. We're, we're not quite certain about that. Byron Scott knocked away by Michael Jordan. Now both coaches going offense, defense. Rick Smith is back into the ball game right now as he's Corey Blunt replacing Steve Kerr. And they had a two of six from the field. Here comes Ricky Miller. 
So Reggie Miller, who appeared to be through for the rest of the game, is limping his way back out of the court. Shot clock at eight. Mark Jackson. Gamble there by B.J. Armstrong really wasn't necessary. He took himself out of the play and left Mark Jackson wide open to play a solid game. Yes, 10 points and 10 assists for Jackson. And a foul is called. Mark and Jackson checking call foul. on Jackson. For the Pacers the there. On the Pacers. Their fourth team foul. The next foul for either club would put them over the limit. And Larry Brown wanted that foul to be committed. No free throws involved to get Reggie Miller out of the ballgame right now. He is just hobbling, unable to move at all at either end of the floor. It's one out of the pages of uh, Mike Reardon. The uh, early 70s giving the foul as instructed by Larry Brown. Here's Jordan. Lost it and then regained. Blocked with the driving hook. Rebound the key. Indiana by three. 40 seconds left in overtime. with Reggie Miller out of there, just gave a little glance coming off that screen, able to get inside Michael Jordan. Earlier, he got called for waving off with the left arm on a play like that. This time, he did initiate the contact, bumping into Luke Wally, but able to maintain some kind of composure and balance, not real good balance, to get that shot up and in. It has been an outstanding performance by the 33-year-old, soon to be 34, Byron Scott, who will go to the line. He's five of six at the line, 84% free throw shooter. Larry Brown of the Pacers reacting to the move by the veteran Byron Scott, who has 16 points. Well, the low post game of Rick Smith has been very quiet all afternoon, and the Pacers tell you what a good basketball team are. They have other ways to do it. They've done it a lot on the perimeter, although maybe a little bit too much, but they also have some people that can get into the lane and make something happen. Indiana by five, 29 seconds to go in overtime. Return. He has now played 44 minutes. He has sat only nine minutes. 19 points, six rebounds, six assists, three steals. Only seven of 26 from the field. Well, Michael had the cramp earlier, then a little bit of a leg injury here. He has been the most resilient athlete, however, that I have ever seen. He'll be sore tomorrow, but he can bounce back. We apologize for the brief technical difficulty experience. Well, all is uh, back in working order. And Jordan goes off the mark. Pippen trying to keep it alive, and he did. Although Larry Brown is upset with the call. Last touch by the Pacers. It will be Chicago ball with 22 10 seconds to go. Or was it that Larry didn't have a good look at it? It was right in front of his nose as McKee and Pippen went for it, and it did appear that Scotty was the man that knocked it out. Oh, that is Jordan. For Jordan. That is number 28. Intercepted by Davis. Block number five for Dale Davis. Final seconds. And the foul is given with seven and seven ten seconds to go. And the Pacers hearing it from this capacity crowd. A lot of heroes today for the Indiana Pacers. There's one of them, but none more than Dale Davis, who did it on the boards and did it with block shots. And as I said earlier in the game, Mark, he is not even 100%, and probably doesn't figure to be the rest.
rest of the year because of those shoulder problems. It could go out at any time. But if he can play like that the rest of this regular season and into the playoffs, the Pacers will be in excellent shape. Vern Fleming, a 70% free throw shooter on the line. L. Davis, 20 rebounds, five block shots. 103-96, Indiana. And Phil Jackson is called for time. Seven and seven tenths seconds to go in OT. Indiana Pacers looking to make it two of three on the season against the Chicago Bulls. A lot of emotion on the court here for both clubs. The Bulls came out in shaky fashion, trying to adjust, although they looked very tentative in the early going, trying to adjust to the return of, of Michael Jordan. Indiana Pacers looking to play off, use it as for motivational purposes, and they certainly did, led by as many as 18. Chicago with the great burst in the fourth quarter, coming back, sent the game into overtime off the scoring of Scotty Pippen in the fourth quarter. Pippen coming up short. Time running down, three seconds to go. It will be Indiana ball. Pippen with 31 to lead Chicago. Miller with 28 and a gallant effort for the Pacers who have won it in overtime. 103 to 96. Chicago shooting only two of 13 from the field in the overtime session. And Indiana with a record of 40 and 24. Now let's go to Ahmad Rashad with Michael Jordan. Ahmad? All right, Michael, you got one under your belt. <laughs> How does it feel? Well, as you see, my timing was a little bit off today. I mean, I was just trying to get my rhythm back. And I don't know if it was a good game for me to come back. Reggie seemed very energized. And, uh, you know, so it's, it's my first game back. And, you know, I know it's not going to happen in one game. It's going to take a little bit so I get my timing back. But... Hey, I'm back. That's all that matters. Does it concern you, though, with the playoffs so close that you will get your timing back in time? Perfect timing. I'm not worried about that. I think, you know, a couple games, I should have my timing back. But, you know, this is not a playoff game, and it's not, you know, I know we want to win, but for me, I mean, I, I, I really got to take my time and, and try to work my way back in. Let's clear up a few things that have come up. They're talking about you. When you coming back, you had some assurances that Scottie Pippen was going to be here and B.J. Armstrong. Is that any truth to that? I'm only back for the love of the game. I'm not back here for extra money. I'm not back here, you know, I was hoping and, and I'm still hoping that Scottie Pippen and B.J. and Phil, all those guys would be back. And, uh, you know, so it's not my place to make those decisions. But, uh, you know, quite simply, I... I hope everything works out, you know, for all three of those guys. But, you know, I'm back for the love of the game. And what about the fact that you had something that you didn't have to go to practice? Or some kind of clause that you wouldn't no, practice? No, I, I love practice. I need to practice. I cannot skip practice. I need it. You know, today he really showed me I need to get back into practice. Last question, Michael. You left at your peak. If you don't come back and lead this team to a championship, do you worry that this might have something mess up your mystique a bit? No, I'm not worried about that. I mean, uh, you know, you're not expected to win every time. But I'm back here to try to help my team win. And, uh... You know, we certainly got a good opportunity. Well, it was great to have you back. We'll see you next week. I hope so. All right. Thanks, Michael. Back to you, Marv. All right, about so Michael Jordan makes his return here at Market Square Arena in Indianapolis. And Michael, very candid about the work that he sees ahead of him off the 7 of 28 performance from the field. Michael finishing with 19 points, 6 rebounds, 6 assists, and 3 steals. And he plays 40. Three minutes at all. Once again, final score in overtime. Indiana 103 and Chicago 96. Next, NBC Sports takes you to the beautiful Bay Hill Club of Orlando, Florida for final round coverage of the Nestle Invitational. And right now, we'll be sending you back to our update studios in New York where the uh, now for sure retired Phil Sims will be live with our Hannah Storm. So for Matt Dukas and Ahmad Rashad and Bob Costas, I'm Marv Albert saying so long from Indianapolis. Again, the final, Indiana 103 and Chicago 96. Reggie Miller, Michael Jordan dueling down the stretch. The Pacers go to 40 and 24. They remain... A half game over Charlotte earlier today. Charlotte defeating Utah for Indiana. Three straight wins, six of the last seven, while the Bulls see a three-game win streak come to a close. They are now 34 and 32. That wraps it for Market Square. This has been the NBA on NBC.